It's the morning of November the 14th, and it is cold. It's gonna be tough, I think, these next few days. Usually this period of November is, you're hoping that either a hot doe drags one of your targets by you, right by your stand, which is, odds are not fantastic for that, or you're hoping to catch one of your targets in that very short window where they're between does, where they're looking for that next doe. It makes it difficult to run into your target. A lot of things have to come together and this is a pretty good spot for those things to come together. We've seen BJ a lot this year on this side of the property, so I like those odds of, of getting an eye on him over here. I'm gonna sit back and enjoy the morning. Hopefully have a good hunt. It's been about an hour now since uh, the encounter with BJ. I've got daddy duty, so gotta keep your priorities in order. So usually about nine or 9.30 or so, I've been packing up and gotta head home for a few hours. I've seen 12 deer total now. Um, it's been beautiful. I first saw BJ, uh, his antler flashed through the brush through some autumn olive over there on the, the north path, right on the edge of the ditch. He's definitely locked on a doe, uh, which was to be expected. Like I said this morning, it was pretty cool. They stepped out in that middle path. Beautiful, that's like stuff you dream about right there, you know. Uh, big mature buck, perfect typical 10 pointer, super frosty morning in the middle of November, standing there with his prized doe. The visions that you dream about seeing as a young kid, you know, when you're growing up whitetail hunting, and that, you know, picture perfect moment that you see on, you know, a painting somewhere, Larry Zach painting or something, absolutely gorgeous. And I got it on film there, that was pretty, that was pretty cool. That made the whole morning right there. So she worked across this path and just slowly kept going into the brush over here. And we've got a camera down here on the south path on a big scrape. She worked in right down there by that. 
And he actually stopped there at the scrape and was hitting that licking branch and stuff. I'm sure he's all over that camera. You gotta love this stuff. It's not a hobby. It's a lifestyle <laughs> for me. There's just nothing like hunting whitetails in the Midwest. I'm just obsessed.
crazy. I just checked my thermals a little bit ago, and they are, they're perfect. You can just see the sun coming up behind me through the trees. Beautiful rut morning, man. This is, this has been incredible. This is living. I'm lost him. Oh, there he is right there. up front for any shaky footage because I don't have my camera arm with me. Just to give a little recap of what happened here, I, I wasn't able to film everything. Not too long after it got light, I saw a doe standing out here in the food plot. And then Mr. Big came walking out right behind her, probably about 80 yards, and he's just standing there with her. Eventually, she started to work closer to me but he actually kind of flanked her, and then he stops, and he's standing out there perfectly broadside at 60. And he stood there for, it seemed like five minutes, right at 60 yards, and, you know, just just a little too far. Put the bow down, and I started filming him again, and he worked into the timber. Then I had uh, a couple other bucks show up. I had a buck come from the south end of the food plot, that half-rack one-year-old. And I had, I had another buck back here, I don't know who it was, back here behind me in the timber, coming up through the timber, grunting. That half rack started walking their way, and BJ immediately comes rushing out of the timber, all bristled up, ears pinned back. He went right at that one-year-old, so that doe was right there really close, right there on the, just inside the timber. She had to admit. And then I saw a doe right here, a little doe, which looked like the doe he was with, right here just inside the timber probably probably 35 yards or so from me and then i saw bj and i could see his rack going through right there and he was all bristled up again with his ears pinned back so whatever buck this was over here that tried walking tried walking in on him uh he was coming over here to push push that buck off too and he was probably 40 yards at that point but Again, all I could see was just his tines going through the woods there. Anyway, that's the update. That's what's happening. Hopefully, continue to have a great hunt. I've already seen 19 deer, so. The equalizers come out tomorrow. Um, you can probably see I've already got my my orange vest and my orange stocking cap in here ready to go. Don't know if I'm gonna bring my bow or Jonathan did mention letting me use his muzzleloader being that he's not really hunting this property right now. He kind of made the decision that he was gonna leave 
leave the property to me to hunt either Chubbs or BJ. I've mentioned this several times, but um, whichever one uh, presents an opportunity for me, that's the one I'm going to take. And the other buck, I'm going to I'm I'm going to pass on. Just got to keep putting in the time. That's all there is to it. Just keep grinding. I've been so lucky that I've been able to go as much as I have been. I, I never, never expected to be able to hunt this much this season. All the credit goes to my wife. She's been working her tail off. The baby's been just fantastic. She's been super healthy. And she's been sleeping through the night, which has been just like the biggest thing ever. She's been just a blessing. She's been a, an incredible little baby. And my wife is the one, and she's telling me, like, get out there. Go hunt. You're fine. I'm fine here. And uh, just had a lot of, it's been a great season so far. I'm not complaining whatsoever. Had a lot of great opportunities, a lot of close calls. Almost every shooter we have on camera on the two different properties that we're hunting, I've seen every single one except, I think, one buck. Yeah, and I had some really close encounters with a few of them. Just little something here, little something there, you know, not able to get a shot off. It is what it is. That's hunting. That's why we love it. Um, that's hunting mature whitetail bucks. I'm just grateful to be able to get some footage of them, take some photos of them. Really thoroughly enjoy that. I love that uh, part of it. But yeah, we'll be right back up in that spot with a straight west or a west southwest tomorrow. That's what it's supposed to be practically all day, it looked like. And it's supposed to be pretty windy too. So hopefully we can have some luck. And we're back. Opening day of Illinois gun season. 2022 the temperature is not horrible it's 19 but the wind is blowing 17 so it feels like temperature is 8 may or may not have just ran a red light but I'm in a hurry we're gonna make it we got plenty of time it's still over an hour before sunrise I questioned whether or not I should take my bow today I thought about it um, but Jonathan has been kind enough to offer up his muzzleloader for me to use and his gun is dead on, so I'm not gonna argue with him. Yeah, that's where we're at. Hopefully we can have some luck. Start of day two of uh, first Illinois gun season, and as you can tell, we're really warm. It's a balmy, what was it, like 17 or something. We went to the new permission property first first thing this morning, and we actually had a decent scent going on. I mean, we probably had seen, I don't know, eight deer, something like that. One nice young buck, probably a three-year-old realized that the wind was switching <laughs> and so decided to crawl out of that tree and fly over to the home farm and get back here into this spot where we where I've been hunting the last few days we got pretty good access really into this spot if you got the right wind and literally I don't know if we got any footage but we just crawled up we hadn't been up here two minutes and a buck we call the flare buck. He's a young, younger eight pointer. Just came walking across the food plot. So hopefully we can continue to see some deer. We'll see what happens. Bat. Are you sure? Are you sure? Oh. 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 <laughs> oh. Man, I was kind of moving because of the wind. <laughs> oh, shoot, man. That is what we're waiting on. 
we were hunting a different property. <laughs> and we're sitting there and talking about it. I was going over there to try and hunt this big eight pointer we have over there. And uh, we're up in the stand and I'm like, why didn't we come back here and try here again? Uh, because, the, because the wind was, is perfect for it, west-southwest. So we moved and we made a mad dash over here, we drove over here. I just sat down, literally, and was just thinking, I just heard some branches crack right over here. It was just getting ready to turn to you and say, did you hear that? And he popped out right there, probably 50 yards. Dude, it's, I don't, at 7.59 right now, so. <laughs> 25 minutes. You were on him? Oh, man. Thank you so much. Didn't turn the GoPro on again. I always forget that. He's a stud, man. I, I mean, he's a hell of a buck. He's a beautiful 10 pointer. We've known that deer for years. We've watched him for years. Anyway, we're going to look at this footage and uh, see if we can go recover. He's coming home with me. The equalizer bails me out again. Another tough grinder of a season. Um, and I mean, we still got a lot of season left, but November 19th, 2022. And uh, we made it happen this morning. We got it done finally on this beautiful big mature 10 pointer that we knew as BJ. Um, apologize for the blood. We tried to clean him up the best we could and uh, a lot of this blood is frozen on his antlers. That's how cold it is this morning. And today would have been the, I think, eighth time I've seen this deer this year. Each time, except for maybe one, maybe the first time we saw him and the second time I saw him locked on a doe, he was a little bit, he was a ways away, but other than that, Every time I had him within 100 yards, we had him at 80 yards a couple times over here. I had him at like 55 one morning, um, just west of here. Just a couple mornings ago in this exact same stand, I had him right out here at 60 yards. And he pushed off another small buck, a little one-year-old. In the afternoon, he was back out here checking these does at like 67. I was hoping to get a little bit closer. I was hoping to get a shot at him with my bow, but he was here all the time. It seemed like this was his home. He was definitely a homebody. Uh, getting pictures of him from January 1 to December 31st. We picked up both of his sheds last year, just west of here. I don't know what else to say. I mean, this is just an awesome buck. Beautiful deer. It's hard for me to put into words what these, what these deer mean to me and the, the love and admiration, respect, all those things that that I have for these animals. Uh, second deer we saw, literally. Um, we saw that flare G2 buck, that young buck, right when we got up to the stand. And then BJ comes out. And the rest is history. 
what a hunt. Another incredible memory for us. Can't ask for anything more than that, man. I love this stuff.